The Akimbo series is back, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you remember the last one, it was the 8800GT Akimbo. This is the 9800GT Akimbo. So if you've already seen my video on the 9800GT, then you know what it already is. It's an 8800GT, but it's a 9800GT, but what they changed? Well, they, they shrunk the die, that's what they did. They made it 55 instead of 65 nm, and since that's good for overclocking, they made an Akimbo version. Uh, so if you don't know what Akimbo is, I'll tell you right now, Akimbo is, it's kind of like, uh, on the previous cards it was a factory overclock. On this one it's not. What the whole point of this is, instead of being a single slot solution, it's a dual slot solution. It has a better heatsink, a better fan, it has a back, he uh, a back you know, on the, on the, I don't know what you call it, on this thing. Uh, back panel cooler majiggy thing in there, that's awesome. So this keeps the whole board cooler, the whole video card stays cooler. Now, they have two versions, they have the 512 and they have the one gigabyte. We got the one gigabyte here. Mind you, this is so new it doesn't even say Akimbo. It just says 8800 GT, but this is the Akimbo. Kimbo version, you can tell by the big uh, cooling on it. It's superior cooling for superior overclocking. Uh, so I won't go too crazy into what it comes with, but I will tell you this, unlike the previous Akimbos, this one comes at a factory clock. So just like the original 8800 GT, except it's a shrunken die. So core clock is gonna be 600, uh, you know, 112 stream processors, 1500 megahertz uh, for the shader, and that's got 512 and one gigabyte of DDR3 respectively, which is running at 1800 megahertz. Uh, the interface is 256 bits wide. So you know those numbers, they're very familiar to you. It's the 8800 GT specs, except 55 nm, 9800 GT. So it's gonna overclock further. Now, with a big cooler like this, that 600 megahertz core clock is, I mean, it's, you're gonna kill it. You're gonna go way into the 700s, probably like 750 and up almost all the way up to 800. You're gonna be able to overclock this. Uh, your shader clock is gonna be able to, you know, it starts at 15, it's gonna get at least get to 1800. Uh, and then as well as your memory uh, will be anywhere from 1800 factory to maybe 2000 uh, when you overclock it. So this is very much meant for overclockers. Uh, so I'll give you a quick preview of the board. Take a look at it, it's pretty. Uh, I don't know if this is the uh, final sample yet. This is a brand new card, so uh, it's, it might say akimbo in the future it might have a slightly different design but if you can see let's see how we could show them uh zoom in on there yeah you see all the the cooling in there that's extra cooling it's got a bigger heatsink bigger fan that flows heavier it's dual uh you know dual slot big grill up here in the top and you can see all in there are fins uh which you don't see in the 8800 gts even the dual slot ones now as usual you have two uh DVIs, they're dual link. They will do 2560 by 1600 maximum resolution. You have your S video output, which people call a TV out because it's morely meant for TV than anything else. There are your breakaway cables, uh, which are, will do 1080i to your high def TV. They actually also included an S video cable, an original S video, just straight S video. So if your TV does have S video, you can definitely use that. And most people don't know, but S video will do high def if it's the digital, the seven pin versus the four pin. And then of course, uh, you, uh, sorry, uh, VGA to DVI adapters are in the box in case you're still using VGA. The only other thing you get is a very useful little four pin Molex to six pin PCI Express. But you shouldn't have too much of a problem because get this, it only uses one PCI Express six pin. Unlike uh, all those video cards out today, they have like an eight and a six, and they're gonna come up with like a 12 soon. Who knows, it's gonna be like a big bracket you stick on there for power. You know, you combine your little nuclear power plant goes on the end. This is a really simple card, one connection. And right here's where you put your SLI connector so you can run more than one card, uh, you know, together. Now, if you wanna know, can you use an 8800GT and a 9800GT together? Of course, you very much can. Oh, and I almost forgot to show you, come back. Check out the back, the back plate. Very, very nice back plate. And as you can see, it does have the cooler from the front. So that gives you an additional uh, ability to cool. So very nice. Uh, this is definitely good for overclocking. This is what this card's meant for. Again, it, you're paying extra. It comes on a factory clock. So if you don't overclock this, you know, don't even buy it. You're wasting, you're wasting your money. Now, Normally, after the little tour, we usually go on to the benchmarks, all exciting benchmarks and all this numbers and stuff, but we're not gonna do it. I mean, and I'm sure you can figure out why. It's an 8800GT, you know what it benchmarks at. You know what people overclock them, what they benchmark at. So I'm not gonna even get into that whole thing. I'll let you go straight to wherever you wanna go now. And just so you know, you know, it's gonna be able to overclock just a little bit further than 8800GT. It will give you the same performance. And then if you wanna do 8800GT one gigabyte that's overclocked, it's gonna be comparable to this. What you get on here is the extra cooling. That's all, it's all about the extra cooling, the akimbo version. So uh, very nice. Now, if you have any questions on this, 
or any other cards, go ahead and email me. I will see you guys next time. For more information on the EVGA GeForce 9800 GT Akimbo, go to compusa.com and type in E145-9830 into the search box. Or you can call us 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 1-800-COMP-USA.